Hello! Welcome to the show where we bake things that you might want to eat. So today, we are going to be making a copycat version of a very famous New York City bakery cookie. I don't actually know how to pronounce their name properly. It's either Levain or Levain. This very famous cookie is a monster. It's almost like a cooked cookie on the outside and the perfect amount of slightly raw but mostly cooked soft, chewy, doughy, melty goodness. So we're gonna try to make that ridiculousness happen today. Mackenzie and I spent maybe two weeks testing this, crying about it, and eating a lot of sugar, and hopefully you guys will like it. Okay, scale, because we love scales. We're gonna put all of our dries in a bowl. So first, two cups of all-purpose flour, about 260 grams. Perfect. And then we're gonna be using some cake flour as well, which doesn't develop as much gluten as all-purpose flour, so it'll keep your cookies nice and soft and fluffy on the inside without it becoming like a dense brick. A cup and a quarter, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda is much more potent of a leavener than baking powder, and it also has a more bitter taste. So we don't want too much leavening. If you saw those pictures of the inside, they're kind of dense and moist. And so we don't want a lot of air pockets, but we want some lift so that you're not just eating straight up cookie dough. And then a quarter teaspoon kosher salt for some flav. Give that a mix. Set that aside. And then up next, two sticks of cold butter that's already been cubed. We were trying to mimic the texture of this cookie, which kind of looks like a scone from the outside and on the inside. If we want to imitate something that's scone-like, we might as well start with a scone-like process. And scones usually call for cubed cold butter. And we're just going to mix it until half of the butter loses its cubicle shape. We don't want it fully mixed. We still want the butter to be fairly cold, fairly firm. Just about half a minute. They're starting to clump, turn it up high. Next up, we're gonna aerate the butter with some sugar, two thirds cup of granulated. Turn it down a little so that you're not spraying the sugar right back out. Some gradual aeration here. Once the white sugar is pretty much in, I'm gonna go in with the same amount of brown sugar, one third of a cup, two thirds of a cup. So we're just gonna let this go until the sugars and the butters are basically incorporated. We don't want it to get too fluffy. And next we're gonna add in our chocolate and our walnuts. We're using a cup of very coarsely chopped walnuts. Take a handful, crush it. So you wanna make sure that you're not chopping these too fine because you want the shape of the walnut to provide you with that weird, bumpy, craggly top. Going in with two cups dark chocolate chips and going in with our cup of coarsely chopped walnut beans. Slow. Okay, we're just gonna add this gradually, maybe in three parts. I like to pulse it a bit. That way you don't have a big cloud of flour. Once that's mostly incorporated, putting in some more. Do the pulsey pulse. And no, there's no vanilla in this recipe. We really couldn't taste the difference. We tested with both, and so we thought, why bother? Okay, then our last addition of flour. At this point, we've pulsed in all of the dries, and you might notice that it's looking not really like a cookie dough. It's kind of dry and crumbly. All of your butter should be kind of like pie dough, and if you squish it together, it should clump in one cohesive mass like this. Because we're still missing an ingredient, the eggs. The eggs go last because the egg whites contain moisture, and water develops gluten. We don't like gluten in our cookies, so we're gonna lightly beat these. We're gonna run the mixer one last time, and we're gonna lift it just to see if there are any super dry pockets down below. And I'm just gonna stream in the egg one at a time, roughly. It's gonna slowly come together. Be patient. And I can see it forming right now. And that's all you need. It's together. It's a dough. Ta-da! Something to note about forming these balls, because they're so organic in shape, we don't want to really 
press them together into one round cookie dough. We just wanna keep them kind of loose. Each cookie is six ounces. So I just picked up one cookie dough. I'm gonna measure it, 7.8, I'm gonna take some away. It's 5.8, I'm gonna put some on, more on. We're at 6.1, good enough. I'm just gonna shape it like that. You see these craggy sides? Great, leave it. So we got eight cookies, six ounces each, and we're gonna plop them into the freezer for about 90 minutes, or if you wanna fridge them, at least two hours. And this will give them time to set up again so that they don't immediately bake and hit the heat and just melt into a wide, wide cookie. We want them to stay in this kind of spherical, tall, scony shape. So 90 minutes, we'll be back. Okay, so it's been 90 minutes and we're about to take the doughs out of the freezer and the oven is preheated to 375. And yes, the cookies are baking at a very high temperature because we don't want them to cook all the way through. We just want the outside to get nicely golden and somewhat crispy and then the inside to still be molten dough. Mm -hmm. Lots of cookies. Folks, I need you to pay attention. This is a step that you cannot skip with this recipe. You will be needing two heavy duty half sheet trays. You will be stacking the sheet trays themselves. You don't want the tray to be making direct contact with the oven. We need a little bit of a heat buffer on the bottom or else because they're baking at such a high temperature, the bottoms of the cookies will burn. And I'm only gonna bake one sheet tray at a time because we want them to all bake evenly. In they go. Double sheet tray on the oven. And these will go for 26 minutes. We will check in at 20 minutes just to make sure no, no funny business is going on. Okay, so it's been 23 minutes. We're just gonna check up on it, see if it needs the final two to three. Oh, looking good. But they need a little bit more time, I think, to get that final golden crust. We shall be patient and wait two to three minutes more. And we'll be back. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, that's really heavy. I mean, these are huge. They're really big. We're gonna let them cool a little bit before we break into them so that I don't lose my hands. But this is what they're supposed to look like. How, do, how does that compare? I mean, that's really close. I think we're there. On the outside. Okay, so disclaimer, if you know anything about me, I don't like hot foods and I don't really like chocolate chip cookies. I don't like melty chocolate. I just feel like I can never enjoy it. But I'm gonna do this for you guys because you guys wanna see someone eat these on camera. Right? Let's eat one, shall we? Nice and soft and gooey and ooh, chocolate. Here we go. If you love walnuts and you love chocolate, then this is a cookie for you. Soft, a little crunchy, crispy on the outside. All of the butter hitting you all at once with that nice, bittersweet, dark chocolate taste. Coming in with the creamy cookie dough-esque middle that's soft and melty and warm and where's the milk? I hope you enjoyed this episode of baking things with me. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to Delish and comment below what you wanna see me bake next. Tell me everything, just tell me everything that's happening in your life, okay? Overshare, hashtag overshare. Great, let's give these cookies out. Who wants cookies?